This is going to be our Talonclaw 4 or T4 build guide. We have all the hardware we need here and here. With all the prints, this one has a bunch of add-ons and upgrades, so we're going to build it and show you how we do it. The T4 has been out for a while, um, but we have a couple of tips and tricks that people ask about, so here we go. Some of the things you will see in this build um, are not super common knowledge, um, just because we like to do things a little differently. So hopefully you will learn something, um, and if not, then thanks for watching either way. But to build a T4 or Talonclaw 4, you will need a Phillips driver for your screws. I like to use thread locker um, so that way things stay tight over time and don't loosen up and you'll be constantly re tightening them. I like to use super glue on the parts for the air brake feature just because they really like to come apart even with thread lock, so I like to super glue them together. And for the elastic cord, I like to use a knife or a pair of scissors and a lighter to trim the ends. You may need a small file or a 316 drill bit if some of your holes came out a bit small. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're gonna do this a little modularly, so piece by piece, um, adding more things along as we go. This is the muzzle, the muzzle one piece. We are going to insert three 440 hex standoffs into the holes and we will use 440 screws to hold those in. These don't have to be super tight, they're just gonna hold the hex nut in. I like to tighten it so they don't wiggle. Oops, immediately failed that. Like that, so if I give it a shake, you can hear that nothing's wiggling. And that's exactly as tight as we want them. Next, we will work on, um, I'm gonna go front to back, so I'm going to grab my upper magwell and one of my priming bars or action bars. I'm gonna take this bar and with the wider holes, I'm going to insert it as such. We're gonna take our shroud segment. Now the T4 has a shroud segment that has a a, a hole in the side and in the top. So we're gonna take that segment with a hole in it and slide that on next. And you can see that those holes will line up in the top. We're gonna do a 440 screw in top. There we go. And then I'm gonna do another 440 screw through the hole in the back side. There we go, just like that. And then we're going to continue with the rest of the shroud. So we have our shroud middle section, which is going to have the open spot of the rail go first. So put that middle section in and then the front section on like so. I'm gonna do my pump grip here or my shuttle. I'm gonna put a bar in. And in all of my metal to metal connections, I will use thread locker to prevent them from falling apart or loosening up over time. So we're gonna do a 1032 hex nut in the hole. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to slide this into the upper magwell, like so. Then I'm going to install the muzzle. So we got two more priming bars and a little more thread lock. into here. You can do the same thing on the other side. Then I'm going to install this assembly into the rest of it. And that should line up to the front there. 
And then I'm going to do another screw here. Okay. And then I'm going to keep working my way backwards. So I need a, this customer requested an aluminum RAM base. Otherwise, we would install the printed parts into the core and we can add some footage from the C4 build guide. It's the exact same style. So if you have a uh, 30 printed RAM base and not a machined one, you can follow the C4 build guide. I will assemble the RAM assembly. So you got your RAM front, RAM back. We'll put the RAM front onto the RAM core, put an O-ring onto the back of the RAM core. I will lube that O-ring. Then I'll install the RAM back, and then I'll put the RAM back into the RAM front with two 440s, again on a low torque setting because Captain Slug's prints were designed to come out a bit wide, which means your holes will come out a bit tight, um, and so you don't have to worry about it stripping, but uh, as far as tolerances go, uh, if you print the holes a little bit wider, you do have a higher risk of stripping the prints, so I'm going to use a low torque setting and tighten them down so they cinch down. And I'll do a little bit tighter than that until I can feel the tightness that I want. Just tight enough that it holds together nice and tight, but not too tight that it strips. I will align the notch in the top of the RAM core horizontally so it lines up to the pockets on the RAM front. And then on the top and bottom of the RAM, make sure that RAM is inserted all the way. But then on top and bottom of the RAM front, I'll use two 440s to hold the RAM core in place. I'll tighten one just until it hits the RAM core and I can feel it hit right there. And then I'll do another one on the other side just until it hits. And then I'll tighten it a little more on both sides and that tightening should allow my RAM core to sit straight in the base. I'll do another o, uh, uh, 012 O-ring on the tip. Then I'll do two one two threes on the back, one for the seal. And the second one I'm going to loop on every other notch for the shock pad. Then I will lube the 012 O-ring on the front so it gets a nice seal at the barrel. Just a little bit of lube is all you need. And then I'll install that into my front assembly here. Then we'll do a 123 O-ring on the ram base, a 012 O-ring on the ram tip. And here I like to add some lube to my RAM tip, and then I will install that to the action bars here with more screws and more thread lock. So got more, you're going to use four 440 screws in each of the holes on either side. You'll want to make sure that your RAM core, RAM base, and action bars are all running parallel. If not, then you may need to adjust some of the screws. Looks good. Then we'll, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and install my barrel. So the way I like to do this is take my barrel. Um, if your barrel has a chambered end because it's a tight barrel, make sure that goes on the RAM core side first. There are a couple ways to install the barrel. Um, you could use the original clamping style collet, which uses an O-ring and a collet to clamp it. If you feel that is holding too loose, you can also use a screw in the bottom hole here. So you would put a hex nut on the inside, and then you'd put your barrel in, and then you would tighten that screw that would grab into the barrel. However, that can mar up or um, make marks on the barrel. So we'd like to send ours with the collet method pre-installed, but you can always add a screw later. So we'll take our 016 O-ring, attach it to the barrel. We'll take our collet and then attach it to the threads. And then we can slide our barrel on all the way down so the barrel bottoms out into the upper magwell. And then we can tighten our collet. Tighten that nice and hard so the barrel stays retained. Check the alignment, everything looks good. Oh, barrel slid out a little bit, there we go. And then we can install the muzzle two, the trench, and our ties. 
Muzzle two. Trench. Trench. Oh, sorry. Tie, tie, and muzzle two. Tie, tie, and trench. And again, we're going to install those just with more 440s, starting with the muzzle two. That just slides onto the end. And super zoomed up here, we're going to do three 440s in those bottom holes there. Kind of dark, but you've got one in the front and then two, one on either side. So, um, and if you're using a power tool, use a low torque setting. I'm going to install this one. And then we have two more. There we go. Then we can do our trench piece, little orange muzzle cap with a 440 on either side. And then the ties um, are just used to cover up the screws on the side, make it a little bit looker, make it a little nicer looking. So I'm going to use these two 1032 by 516 screws. Use some thread lock and install that on either side. Okay, so that is their entire front half minus the accessories. So we're gonna start on the magwell and continue to work our way back. So the magwell again is assembled like most magwells from Captain Slug is a 440 in one side. And then you have a 440 in one side, and then you have your mag release, just the one release, and you're going to use a 1 16th pin and slide that through, kind of line those holes up. I like to use gravity to help it drop through. Once it drops through, then I'll cap it off with another screw, and then use a, an extension spring to give that mag release its tension. If I can stretch it, stretch it up onto there like that. Then that'll go onto the front of the assembly like this. There we go. Then we're going to install the three remaining bars. With one on either side and one on top, so um, I will not use thread lock on these because these are made to be unscrewed if you want to take your blaster apart. So I'm going to try to close that gap by holding the prints together while driving these screws. It's going to be two 5 sixteenths on each side. And then one on top. Now we are doing the further space holes out in the back. So the two closer holes in the front. And then we'll work on our grip and continue our way back. So the grip is going to be composed of a left, right, and main, as well as our grip B our trigger, sear, and trigger guard. Now we are using aluminum parts, so it's gonna be slightly different. If you are using um, 3D printed parts, see the footage that will come right after this for the uh, C Ford, because those parts are assembled the same way. And so for this, uh, this particular build, we're, for the aluminum sear, we're going to drive a screw into the middle of our grip main. Let's see if you can see, there you go right there. And that'll act as our uh, pivot point for our spring, or a, a spring post for our sear spring. Usually it's not as hard. There we go. It's all about halfway, so we have a screw in there that the spring will loop around. We can take our sear, we will attach an extension spring to it, and we will loop that on the screw that we installed, just like that. And then we can assemble the grip around that. So we're gonna take one of our grip halves, 
and put it on the back. And then in this hole here, if we need to clean it up, we are going to put our nylon spacer and then the sear will sit around that. Just like that. And while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and carefully uh, install the screws on this side. Actually, yeah, might as well do that. Then our grip B is going to go in this orientation with this screw on the other side holding that in. First, I'll take one half of the grip, put it on my grip main with a 440 in the bottom, middle, 472. Then I'll do this grip B with the cutout facing to the back and down and do another 440, torque setting two. Tighten it down just until it cinches and then I'll do one 440 in the back. I'll tighten it down just until the screw kind of hits that bottom pocket and not go too far. Take off some of these little strings that came from the printer. Then I will take my elastic and we usually send it with about eight inches of elastic, but you usually just use about six. Um, we'll tie a knot into one end. As close to the end as we can, get it nice and tight. That'll be good enough. And then burn the end, make it look pretty. Burn the end, make it look pretty. And then we'll thread that into the sear. Now the hole in the sear can come out really small sometimes, so it might be kind of difficult unless you use our updated prints with a wider hole. Push it through, then go through the trigger, and then go through the grip. Then you can see how much extra string we actually have. If you're using an aluminum trigger or an aluminum sear, you would instead put a 440 into the back of the grip where we have added in a screw port, and then you would just loop your spring or another extension spring onto the sear, onto that screw. Um, but we'll just do the last cord for this one. Take another 16th pin, put it in the trigger. Should line up. Same thing as a mag release though, if the pin doesn't fit in the trigger, use a pick to make the hole wider. So we'll just put that in. Nope. Missed that hole completely. And then we'll use our, our nylon spacer for the sear, put that on the screw in the back of the grip the sear on top of that. Um, and then here I like to set my tension. Now everything's in place. I'll just pull on the string a little bit, the elastic, and I'll tie a knot and keep that knot kind of close to the grip. And then feel that tension and it should be enough resistance where you've got a bit of a trigger pull um, and the sear resets. It doesn't have to be very tight. Um, personal preference, you can adjust it later. Then I will cut the end of that, the excess of that elastic. So you can see we do have about two inches of extra, so use about six inches. Then we'll burn the end to make it clean. Put the other half of the grip on, and I'm gonna take off again more of these little strings. And then same as the other side, a bunch of 440s, bottom, middle, top on the grip B and then bottom to hold the sear in. Again, I'm just tightening down so it cinches together. Don't, go to, don't have to go more than that. Then we're going to install our trigger with another 1 pin. Just like that. Then we're gonna do the other half of our grip. Make sure that nylon spacer sits in those holes. Wait. But it is designed to have two screws, one on either side of the nylon spacer, which are totally not needed. These might have been because a threaded spacer was originally designed to be used. However, you don't have to put these screws in. Then have another screw for the grip be on the other side of the trigger. Then we have our trigger guard in this orientation. So the flatter sides on the top. 
and install that with a screw on either side. Then the grip just slides onto those lower flat bars on the rear. Just like that. Then we're going to I'm going to install or I'm going to assemble my plunger and the plunger assembly right now. So in this plunger, we're going to install this long hex standoff. And we want to make sure that seat's all the way in the bottom. So I like to give it a little tap with the mallet. Usually the long hex standoff can be a tight fit. And so in order to get it all the way down, it does help to tap it until you can hear it go all the way down or you can successfully thread a screw in. And we will use some thread lock again. Keep that from loosening up. And we're gonna tighten that, make sure that is thoroughly holding that long hex standoff in. Yep, you can hear that tighten down, we're good. Then we do a one, two, three O-ring on top and the air brake feature is going to be our grommet. But in order to keep the grommet on, we like to use uh, another 440 washer in front of it. So it's gonna be the 440 washer on the screw, then the grommet, and then I'm gonna do a little drop of super glue in the hole, just to keep that screw and grommet in place, because it will like to loosen up, because you're not threading in very far. Then we will install that screw, grommet, and washer and tighten it down so that way the grommet is pressed down and expanded just a little bit. So kind of like that. It's going to be nearly impossible to get it centered. But that goal is that is so that it fits into the back of your ram core and creates an air seal. So if we were to simulate that, we can kind of feel that it's still a little loose in there. So I'm going to tighten it a little more. And try that. Yeah, so I can feel that it's got a lot more friction now. Um, and then to make sure it doesn't have too much friction, I will lube the grommet and we'll see how that fits. Yeah, so now we can do the plunger assembly. So we will lubricate one side of the plunger tube. Then I will insert, you know, lube the grommet, insert my plunger tube, flip it around, then install the plunger tube on my RAM base, just like that. Then the rail on top, I have the skeg rail. So I'm going to install that, okay. Then we're going to install our Kiri or stock mid. And you can see that we're going to have some holes lined up. So we're going to install some more 440 hex nuts into this guy. So I'm going to, or 440 standoffs into this guy. So we're going to install that standoff into the slot. And then like before, we're going to retain it by tightening another 440 screw on top of it. However, do not over tighten this one because 3 8 is long enough that it can protrude inside of the tube and interfere with the plunger. So I'm going to tighten it just until that hex nut stops moving or that hex standoff stops moving. And then do it the same on the other side. A little more. Oh, so I can, I can feel or I can see it starting to poke out. So as far as I can go. Still a little loose, but those will tighten down once we get the side screws in. So this is going to go in this orientation. So the top lines up to this slot. And I'm gonna slide that on. Before we slide it on all the way though, we are going to drop a 1032 hex nut into the top. So it'll sit in that hole, then that'll line up. Then in that screw on top, we're gonna to use another uh, 5 16th screw with a little Loctite. Yeah, I just spilled a little drop. OK, 
okay? Then we're gonna do the hold the stock on. We're gonna do, oh, I'm spilling Loctite everywhere. Gonna do two more screws on either side. We'll do two more 440 screws on either side. Okay, to do use the aluminum sear, you do not need the elastic unless you have the adjustable stock. But if you have the skeg stock and the aluminum sear, you do not need an elastic. Okay, and then the skeg stock is we have our spring. That is how long it is supposed to be because we have full compression in our T4s. If you find the prime is too stiff or you just don't like the longer spring, then you can always cut it down. Then we're going to install either the back plate or in this case, the skag main. And that's just gonna slide on. And then a pin goes on either side or in one side. And if it's too tight, you can use your 3 16 drill bit to drill it out first and then install your spring. Give it a little tap, fits in just fine. And then you can do another one on top as designed. And there you go. Then we can attach our stock to this. So we have our skeg flat and our plate and they just install into each other. Just kind of line up the shapes. And then there is a hole uh, in, in the inside that holds the flat into the plate. Good enough. And then we're going to do a 440 in either hole. Then that will slide on. And then you can actually set, so you can set your length of your stock all the way in or out. We'll gain some inches there. Put it all the way in for now. Our stock core, which helps lock it in place. And those holes should line up all the way through on the bottom. If your prints came out loose, you will want to use a 5 16 screw all the way through to hold that in. So we're going to just drop a 5 16 in there, tighten it down. Oops. There you go. Okay. And there's our T4. Test that air seal. Pretty decent. does not pinky fire. So if you want to pinky fire, you're gonna to have to adjust the sear depending on how your prints came out. You can file that top edge of the sear down. Again, you can see the other Caliburn video for that. But we wanna make sure that pull is a little, little nicer. If you have an angled foregrip, you slide it on. You do not want the foregrip to stick out past the bottom of the shuttle. So put it a little forward if you have to, like that. Again, center that key. and then do another 5 16 Awesome. Now this one also has all these fun shroud parts. So it goes A, B, C, D, and rail. And I will line them up starting with D first. So slide D on. Then C. Then B. Then A, oh, and if you look, I didn't quite slide them on enough. So I'm gonna slide this one down some more. Try that out. I'm gonna make sure that each one of these countersunk holes lines up to an open slot in the rail. A little more and then we'll be good. And then that just gets installed with more 440s in every countersunk hole. And I like to do a low torque setting because there's not a lot of plastic it's going through. It's just going through the rail or the um, shroud itself. So you go. Oh. Okay. Then the, uh, here there's the Armax with the rail with more 440 screws.
There you go. T4.